Apple has just introduced iOS 18 and it brings with a significant update to the Photos app. Join me now and I'm going to walk you through it. Hi, I'm Molly Bartelt. I own Pixology where we've helped our clients organize millions of photos over the past 10 years. Apple sure keeps us on our toes with new updates to our iPhone each year. The changes to the Photos app usually are subtle, but this time it's a whole new interface. Before I dive into showing you what's new, I do want to mention, especially if you haven't been here before, that the photos on your phone are just one part of your family collection of memories. And if you're really having a hard time figuring out how to save all of that, we've got a roadmap and you can download it with the link in the description. Let's take a look at the new photos app on your iPhone. First things first, be sure that you have updated to iOS 18 or this video is not going to make much sense. So in your settings just go to the software update and then make sure that it says iOS 18 and you are set. If you haven't updated you can just click on the button, plug it in, let it update and come back here <laughs> a little bit later. So we're gonna go over to the new photos app all right and as you can see here, there are squares. Your whole library of pictures is right at the top. And we could scroll back and we go, you know, all the way back to the beginning of time that you have pictures. The whole new interface really is around this look here that you see. So it says photos and then you scroll down to get to the things that you want to. So like I often want to look at my videos. So I have to scroll down to media types here and then I can click on my videos and see them there. There's utilities and albums, the shared albums, and then it has wallpaper suggestions. So anything that you want to do in the photos app is visible on the first screen. Now if you happen to scroll up into the photos a little more, it kind of turns into the library. And once you're in the library view, you can click on years, months, and all, and go back and forth that way. You also have these up and down arrows. When you click that, you've got options to sort by date capture or sort by recently added. For those of you who add pictures from text messages or, you know, uh, emails on your phone and you want to see the recent ones, you're going to need to click sort by recently added. This happens when someone sends a picture that's really from two years ago and you save it in your photos and then when you go to the library sometimes people couldn't see it and it's because it was sorted by date captured and that photo you just saved was saved <laughs> like two years back. So now you have this easy way to just sort by recently added or date captured. This is a fantastic feature. You also have options to filter your library. So you can just click on photos and then those annoying screenshots that you take for information will go away. I just keep it for all items, but you also have favorites, edited videos and screenshots if you wanted to just see those items alone. So that filter will be handy for some of you. Then you have view options and this allows you to zoom out or zoom in so that you can have bigger pictures right in the library view. Uh, the aspect ratio grid, when you click on that it changes it so that you can tell if the photo is vertical or horizontal. This is not pleasing to me to look at. I like to just see the full squares of photos. And then this view options also gives you the option to show screenshot or to turn that off and then the screenshots disappear. And then you can also just check off the photos shared with you or turn that back on. So I'm just in the library view and the moment I start pulling up I see 
the other ways I can view my pictures below. Another way to do this is to hit the X button there. So X button will take you back to like your home screen of your Photos app. I will point out that you still have to click the select button at the top right there. I'll just cancel and click select. If you want to select pictures to share them or maybe you're going to uh, trash the ones you don't need. And that's your library, okay? All of these groupings of pictures are system generated. Apple put them in here for you and you get to change the order of this. Right down at the bottom it says customize and reorder. So depending on what's important to you, you can move things around. So let's just talk about what we have. Recent days, this is kind of fun. It just gives you the pictures you took on the days in the last week or so. People and pets, this is fun when you want to find photos of, you know, people or even your pets. See, I click the arrow to the right of pets there, and now I get to see everything. Like, I wanted to see the pets. Like, that's so super fun that you can <laughs> have your pets be facially recognized, because that's what's going on here. And people and pets, it's facially recognizing. It does allow me to sort and it allows me to create groups of people. So if I wanted all the pictures of my daughter and my sister, it's already set here. So I'm going to try the three dots at the top and I can edit the name and people. So here my sister isn't named yet and I could add her name. So that is kind of handy. All right, so I'm still in people, but I'm in the groups of me, my sister and my, my daughter. So groups at the top, you can have groups uh, selected. So it'll pull up the pictures of you and whoever else you want in that group. That's kind of cool. So I could like create one for my family, which would be these three and me. So I'll add that. And now I'm going to call this uh, family and click done. So now it's pulling up pictures that have all four of us in it. That's a fantastic feature. Okay, now I think we've kind of covered people and pets. Pinned collections, this is just the collections I think that are system generated and you get to choose which pinned collection you want to have up in that area. I don't need the map so I'm going to delete that. And I guess favorites recently saved videos and screenshots will work. Um, but this trips is kind of fun. And you can move these around at the right hand side here. These three lines allow you to select and move them around. That's pretty cool. I know I like to have media types um, kind of easily accessible as well. So I'm going to add that. Now I'm going to close it and you can see that the pinned collections are right there like an easy quick way to get to items. So let's look at trips. Trips is AI working system generated. I was in Sioux Falls so I've got pictures from there. <laughs> All the places that I've been like it's really got um, an amazing amount of ability <laughs> Pull your trips together for you. And I know many people have been lots of fantastic places and the photos are kind of hidden on their phone. Apple brings your trips right out for you. That's a pretty cool feature. Now, I'm going to just say that I still think that pictures belong on your computer. The ones you want to save and, and pass on to future generations because you have more control over them. But this ability to um, group pictures in the Apple Photos app is going to really make a lot of people happy. That's pinned collections. Then we have memories. These are the groupings of pictures that Apple just puts together for you. They're kind of fun to look at. And I know like my mother-in-law loves these. She'll watch them and just, you know, get caught up in looking back at what we've all done together. So uh, that's memories. Here I am now down at the trips level. And this is just part of, you know, that home page of the Photos app. Trips is out here and I can swipe through them sideways. 
Then we have featured photos. I'm not sure what qualifies as a featured photo, but these are all really, really cool to look through too. Then we have media types. So this is where you can look at your videos, the selfies, <laughs> your live photos, which if you are tired of having live photos, you're gonna wanna watch that video, whoops, <laughs> that video to turn that feature off. Also portrait photos are in there. Then you have utilities. So you can hide photos from your main view. I don't get involved with that because I would really have a hard time remembering what I hid and what I didn't, so I don't use it. Also recently deleted is in there. And then there's a duplicate finder in there, which is a handy feature. I will say I've compared the duplicate finder in the Photos app to a uh, Photo Sweeper or Duplicate Photos Fixer Pro, and this does not capture everything, but it's a start. That's utilities, and apparently it has a receipts section in there, which looks like there's a check in there too. That's new. Now we're at the albums level. This is really important for me to be able to see my albums quickly. When I go to albums, I can see the albums that I've already set up. If it's a square picture, like next to house project, that is an album. If it's got four little squares, like this 2010's photos, that means it's a folder holding album. So a really useful way to do this is to have a photos for information. So you see that there, a photos for information folder. And then inside I have the different um, categories, which are albums of pictures in there. So let me close that. And up at the top, you can create a new folder that holds albums or you can just create a new album. And I tested this out a little bit. You can move albums from folders in and out and it's much easier than it, than it used to be. So I'm excited about that. Now we have shared albums. I don't really recommend sharing uh, pictures through albums because it can evolve into a, a mess. And if you wanna know more about shared albums, Watch that video <laughs> next. Anyway, then we're down to the wallpaper suggestions. So here's Apple just trying to give you some ideas for wallpapers for your phone. I think that's kind of kind of neat. That's all of the sections that appear on the home page of the Photos app. So let's click on Customize and Reorder and make this more meaningful. It it will be different for each of us, but I know albums has to go right at the top. And then I like the idea of having people and pets. Uh, the pinned collections, I don't need to see all those little, little icons for each of these categories. So I'm going to uncheck that. Memories, I don't want to get too involved with that. So I'm going to, I might actually just turn that one off. Okay. Utilities is important, media types, featured photos, the wallpaper suggestions, I'm gonna turn that off as well. I'll leave shared albums on because I have them, so I might as well um, just keep them there from years ago. But now my albums are right at the top for me where I like them. And then people and pets. The recent days is kind of fun. Trips, featured photos, and media types. That's the walkthrough. I want to just point out one last thing, and that's the search button, all right? You can search by all sorts of things. So I'm going to type in flowers and see how quickly <laughs> this iPhone brought my flower pictures up. You can search for months, like, you know, August 2024, or you could search for uh, dog. Well, you don't have to search for dogs because now you have that in your pets, your people and pets. So anyway, don't forget about searching because that can help you too. We have covered a ton about the Apple iPhone photos update. What do you think about it? Do you like it? Leave a comment below. I'd love to know. I'm sure that Apple would love for you to store all of your family memories up in the Photos app, even the old print pictures and other items that you need to have digitized yet. 
But that's not always practical, and that's why I really encourage you to download the guide I mentioned at the beginning so that you can get a plan to have all of your memories saved in a good location to share easily and pass on to future generations. Thank you so much for joining. We'll see you the next time. Thank you.